binary search is an algorithm for finding or simply checking for the presence of a specific value in a sorted array, like this one. The logic of the algorithm depends on the array being sorted, and use of an array allows the algorithm to be efficient. The algorithm searches for a value by repeatedly comparing it to the middle value and then refocusing the search on one half of the array subrange that was just being checked. This search can be easily represented recursively. For example, if I have a binary search method that takes an array, which we'll assume refers to this one here, as well as a range of index values, inclusive, so 0 to 15, would mean we're searching from the first index, 0, all the way up to the last index, 15. And then finally, we have a search key, which is a specific value in the array that we're searching for. In this example, we'll search for 23. Now, just looking at this array, we can see that 23 is here. But what sequence of recursive calls would lead to 23 being discovered by binary search? So the way the algorithm works is we first check the midpoint of the subrange defined by 0 and 15. If we're doing integer division, meaning we round down, then the midpoint of this range is 0 plus 15 divided by 2, which is 7. If we look at index 7, we have a value of 50. So we have array index 7 equals 50, but 50 is greater than 23, which is what we're searching for. So if that's greater than 23, then it means that it is impossible for 23 to be anywhere to the right of the 50 because we know the array is sorted. So if 23 is in the array, we already know it is, then it has to be to the left of the 50. So this algorithm will recursively search the subrange of the array that is to the left of 50, which looks like this. So the lower bound of our range remains the same, still 0, but the upper bound decreased. We just checked index 7. We know that 23 has to be to the left of 50, which is at index 7. Therefore, the upper bound of our subrange will be the index to the left of the 7, which is 6. So we're searching from 0 to 6 for a search key of 23. We once again compute the midpoint, which is 3 and then check the array at that index, and array index 3 is 13, and this time 13 is less than 23. So now we want to search to the right of index 3, where the 13 was. However, we've already excluded all the values greater than 50. So we're only searching to the right of index 3 within the subrange from 0 to 6. So that call would look like the following. So this time, the upper bound of the subrange remained the same at 6. But the lower bound increased because we just checked index 3, found 13, and we know that our search key of 23 is greater than 13. So we move that up by 1. Our lower bound is 4, our upper bound remains 6. The midpoint of this range is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. And the value at index 5 is 23. So we have found our search key and we have successfully gone through the array with binary search to find the search key. So what does this process look like if we do not find the value we're looking for?
Let's say we were looking for a value of 90. Now 90 is not in this array, and we can see that because this is a sorted array, and we have the value 77 and then 92. 90, if it were here, would be between those values, but it is absent. So what sequence of recursive calls are we going to go through to find that 90 is not present? We start off by searching the whole range. We once again compute the midpoint and check that value. And 50 is less than 90. So we will search for 90 to the right. So now our subrange is 8 to 15 because 7 was the midpoint index we checked before and 8 is directly after that. The midpoint of the range 8 to 15 is 11. The value there is 92 and 92 is greater than our search key of 90. So we will now search to the left of 92, but still within the subrange 8 to 15. So our lower bound remains index 8, but because we just checked index 11, when we go to the left, our upper bound is index 10. So we're searching from 8 to 10 for the search key of 90. The midpoint here is index 9. whose value is 76, which is less than 90. So now we'll go to the right of index 9. And the value to the right of 9 is 10. So 10 is both the lower bound of our range and the upper bound of our range. And this is OK because our range is inclusive. So really we're saying search for the search key of 90 within this single array cell of index 10. Now, it's obvious that that will be its own midpoint, but I'll show the calculations here. And when we check index 10, we get the value of 77, which is still not equal to 90. But we don't know that we failed yet. That comes in the next step. Because with 90 being greater than the value in the array, we'll do the thing we usually do. We'll search to the right of index 10. That means we will increase the lower bound of our search range. But this will result in a problem, which you'll see in a moment. So now we have a situation where the lower bound is 11 and the upper bound is 10. But this is nonsensical because the lower bound should always be less than or equal to the upper bound. And so since it is not true that 11 is less than or equal to 10, this is a failure case. So what we actually return in either the success or failure cases depends on what we want to know. We could simply return true when we find the search key and then false otherwise, such as in this case. Or we could return an array index. So in the case of success here, where we found the key at index 5, we could return 5 as the index where it was located. Whereas in this failure case, we want to make sure that we know we failed, and so we could return an integer of negative 1, because negative 1 is not a valid array index, and that could be interpreted as failure. In some cases, the array contents may be objects that are more complex than the simple numbers used in this example, and the actual contents of those objects might be more complex and also distinct from the particular search keys that we're using to find the objects. 
And so in those cases, we might just want to return the object itself to get all of the things in the object that were not part of the search key. Regardless of what we return, if we're going through this process, then the overall efficiency of our algorithm will be O of log of n. And if we wanted to be specific, this is basically log base 2 of n number of comparisons against the midpoint value. Because if we have n values here, so here our n is 16, we are repeatedly breaking the array in half, in a sense. And as we've seen many times before, whenever we are repeatedly breaking a structure in half, the number of times that will occur will be log base 2 of n. This big O time complexity makes binary search more efficient than simply searching through the array from left to right, which of course has an average and worst case time of O of n.